Hey guys, welcome to the vlog or welcome back to the vlog. I am so excited to talk with you today because I built a table to go outside. <laughs> so I know um, I've been talking about going into our bedroom and stuff and I was waiting on some items to come and they've just arrived. But in the meantime, between time, while I was waiting on all of those things to come in, I decided to go ahead and tackle um, the patio because I want to use it. I want to use the deck. So I hadn't decided on like a permanent situation. So until we can figure out what table we're going to save up for and things like that, I was like, you know what? I see all the girls on YouTube making tables, doing it for cheap. Let me see if I can do like a real inexpensive solution for right now to get us somewhere to eat out on the patio so that we can enjoy our deck that we have invested in. So that's what I did. I built a table, I built a bench to match it, and today I'm going to show you how I did that and I'm going to show you how I'm setting it up for us to enjoy for the season until we figure out a more permanent solution and who knows, this might become the permanent solution. So let's hop into today's video. I'm so excited. So first thing first, let's talk about the materials I used to build out the, both the table and the bench. So I used a mix of four by fours and I used one by sixes, one by fours and two by fours. That was the four primary sizes of the wood that I used. Um, I didn't do like a lot of cutting on video because sometimes my math y'all it don't be math and so for the table I really wanted to concentrate and get my cuts right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put together like a cut sheet and a guide like a build guide for it now that I've completely finished building it out with like a step-by-step -step, this is what you do that way if you want to build something like this for your patio or deck or outside area you have step-by-step -step. but for the sake of today's video keep it short concise and to the point um, I used my miter saw in some cases. I used a table saw because I wanted 45 degree angles on the end so it wouldn't have like that exposed wood look on the edges. I wanted it to be a little bit more clean um, and I connected everything with pocket holes and wood glue. That's it. So uh, I'll let you watch a little bit of the footage that I have and then when we start to assemble the actual uh, I didn't show a lot of me assembling the table, but I did show after I got the table together, I did show how I assembled the bench because it was the exact same process, just on a smaller scale. So you'll get to see that. I just, guys, for the table, I had to make sure I had it right because I did not want to waste a lot of money on materials and I wanted to make sure that I had a good product at the end. So I'll be right back when we start assembling the bench. So while you're watching, I just want to say thank you for stopping by today's video. If you're new here, my name is Kay Whitaker. Um, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I've got four amazing humans and we designed this channel when we were building our new construction home, kind of just documenting that process. And now that we've been in it, we've been in our home for like a year now and we're taking our time just step by step, day by day, you know, making customizations from what was semi-custom to actually being a custom home. I love interior decor. I love outside probably more so than I love inside. So in addition to this channel, I've also started a brand new channel that is dedicated to our landscaping and gardening projects. 
And I would love it if that's your type of thing, that if you would connect with me there as well. But on this channel, you can expect to see a lot of projects like this where we are taking on some DIY stuff. I've got a long list of house updates that I'll link in the description uh and up below and up top i'm sorry in the cards we could check out some of the other projects that we've done from wall trim to custom built-ins and stuff like that it's a lot of fun so thanks for stopping by if you like what you see please feel free to subscribe to the channel i would really appreciate it it helps other viewers that are like you find my channel if you like today's video and if you don't want to miss the, our, the next time we upload be sure to give it a big thumbs up turn on your bell notification and you know, the next time we upload, you'll get a notification. If you want to learn more about me and my family, you can connect with us over on Instagram at Kay Whitaker. Uh, I'll leave that down below as well. And I pin a lot of my inspirational thoughts about the projects that I'm going to do as well. So I'll leave my Pinterest link down there as well. So I just want to take a minute while I was building just to introduce myself and say thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you watching. And I would love to know if doing a DIY table is something that you would take on yourself or are you the type of person that would just go out and buy what you want? Drop down in the comments and let me know. And I hope to see you in the next video. Oh, and by the way, at the end of today's video, I'm going to be doing a full breakdown on the cost that it took me to build the table, the bench, and purchase all of the accessories. So be sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to tell you exactly how much everything cost me in order to get this done. All right, so now we're at the point where we are assembling the bench. And like I said, this is the exact same process that I used to assemble the table. I started with the parameter borders and I had pocket screws drilled into the ends of each piece. And I just connected the parameters with pocket glue, with pocket screws and wood glue and made sure they were squared off. Uh, once I connected the ends together, for the table, I then went in and put installed the middle piece directly in, to, in the middle of the table and then laid my slats in and screwed them in to each end of the table. Um, the only difference with the bench and the table is that the bench doesn't have like a middle piece decor wise up top, but there is middle support in it. So I will say, um, when you're cutting, make sure your saw <laughs> is completely squared off. While I was cutting my four by fours, I've got to get a better miter saw. Um, my miter saw is supposed to be able to cut material like six inches deep and it's just not doing it. But while I was cutting my four by fours for the legs for my bench, after a couple of cuts, I realized that my saw wasn't square. So I've got a couple of legs that were a little janky. I fixed it, I'm not gonna show it to you, but just make sure if you do this that you make sure your saw is completely squared off as well because you want your cuts to be as straight as possible because we don't want rocky furniture, okay? If any time is a time to get your cut straight, it's when you're making a table and a bench because if they are off at all, they will tell you. So once I have the top part of the bench assembled, I go in to assemble the legs and what we call the apron. Um, for the bench, I wanted the apron to be like flush to the sides for the table. I brought the apron in just a little bit. And if you're not familiar with what an apron is, is it's the two by fours that you see running down the middle that provides support and connects like it pulls everything together. So with the pocket screws and the wood glue, we screwed down 
into the wood and then into the four by fours to create a really solid base. And then once those were screwed in on the bench, I went in with middle supports and I went in with middle supports with two by fours as well and connected them to each side of the two by fours. I ran them the short ways across to provide some support in between. This bench is five feet wide and my table is like 75 inches wide so I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any slouching in the middle on either side so the way that you do that is by installing that middle support bracket at least in this scenario that's how I did it to make sure that there wasn't any slacking and that there was a solid really solid uh, support system underneath it and it's really as simple as that everything is glue and pocket holes and I can say that it is pretty strong and it feels really secure <laughs> with the exception of the bench now the bench I didn't put glue on the legs because I will at some point go back and correct the cuts that I made but for now the pocket holes have seem to be providing the support that I need I just didn't feel like going back to Home Depot I just I just did not have another run in me so we made it work and I ordered some feet like some levelers on Amazon to make sure the bench was level and we didn't have like a rocky seating situation. But yeah, that's it. I mean, simple as pie. Uh, I say that, but you know, once you get your cuts down, everything is just 90 degree angles and that's pretty straightforward and your girl can handle that, all right? So I'll let you watch me put the rest of this together and I'll come back when it's time to start decorating. So now that the table and the bench are assembled, uh, I wanted to, I have been on the hunt for like an all black table. So I couldn't find one exactly like I wanted it to be. So I got some stain that is like a opaque, meaning you can't see through it. It's solid color. That's supposed to help with like weathering and things of that nature. So we went with the slate color by Bear from Home Depot. Got it straight from Home Depot. Uh, I applied like two coats to the table and that seems to be doing great. What I will say about paint though, especially with this type of project, I should have painted before I assembled because there is space between the slats and getting under the table, as easy as it may seem, was not easy for me. So underneath my table is not painted. <laughs> but, and, but there's space in between like the gaps in the table that I really want to be black but it required a smaller paintbrush. And I mean, that's gonna be meticulous work. And by the time I got finished assembling this, this took me a couple of days to get done. I was over it. Like at this point, you see me painting and I am in my brain, like I am ready for this to be done. So if I could offer any advice is once you've got your cuts and you've dry fitted to make every it make sure everything is squared off and it fits like you want it to fit, uh, paint your pieces so that you don't see any of the wood if you don't want to. And you'll see what I'm talking about later when I give you some close shots. I wish I would have painted first versus waiting. Um, I probably could have sprayed it, but I didn't feel like prepping the deck for spray. So I'm gonna have to go back through with the small paintbrush and try to get in between the slats, which in between the slats is only like an eighth of an inch. So I don't even know if it's worth it. Again, this is a temporary solution. I weighed the risk and the, the work that it was going to take in order to do it. And for me, it just wasn't it just wasn't what I wanted it to be. So I've decided that if I can get to it, I will. If not, then it's not something that I can't live with. Uh, also, make sure you're assembling on a flat surface. I don't know if you can see on the right-hand side, like when you're 
just drilling in with your pocket holes. You don't want your wood to turn. So use clamps if you can. Uh, I didn't have clamps that were big enough to reach across the one by six. So I just made it work. I'm okay with it because it's an outside table, but you could absolutely make an inside table like this. And if I were going to do this inside, then I would want those all the way flush, like flat together. I would not want, um, those pieces to be risen. So just make sure um, you clamp it down uh, if at all possible because you want your pieces to be flat or if you're just meticulous like that and even though it's outside you want them to be flat, make sure you use a clamp to hold them in place when you're uh, drilling in your pocket holes so that the wood doesn't shift on you because that is, you can't see it when it's flipped over. You don't notice it until it's fully assembled and by that point, shoot, all them screws was in. I wasn't turning the table over, y'all. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I was not about to turn the table over. <laughs> so yeah, I painted for a little while. I'll come back and show you what it looks like in just a sec. Guys, so we are completely done with paint. Well, we're not completely done. Tip, if I haven't said this already in the video, before you install your slats, should you decide to do this, paint them. That way you don't have to do what I'm gonna have to do and take a little bitty paintbrush and try to get in between them. It's gonna be hard. I'm gonna try. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'm not gonna sweat it, but I am, I'm feeling how this is set up right now because I think this is a great dining solution for what we need for right now. And it really makes all of this kind of come together so i'm gonna give you a quick walkabout with everything that we have in place you go ahead you got your bag with everything that we have in place just to kind of talk about some vision I, I haven't done any tabletop decor because the table actually needs to cure for 72 hours and i need to get in between those cracks so i'm gonna try to do that in the next couple of days and then once we do like decoration uh, and there's a couple more pieces that I have coming out here or one more piece that I have coming for the deck and then I think we're gonna be good for the season as far as furniture is concerned and I can continue to just kind of build out the rest of the landscape around it so let's take a look So it's decoration time. So I went back and forth on whether or not I was gonna have a rug out here um, because I think the deck is beautiful, but I decided to go with the rug because this is Trex material and it gets hot. When the sun hits it, it is hot and we like to walk around with no shoes on. So, and my baby's like, I have shoes on right now just because it was a little wet outside. But my girls, especially, they are a lot like their mom. I walk outside on my patio and now on this deck with no shoes on and I cannot expect them to put shoes on. <laughs> if I don't put shoes on, uh, they're just not gonna do it. So I decided to go with the rug to save our little feet from burning. And I'm actually glad I did because I was really concerned about the table being black and the chairs. You'll see those in just a second. I wanted everything to flow from like underneath the covered patio down to the deck. So this rug was a great way to pull the gray that's under the covered patio down to the dining area. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, this rug I got from Home Goods, but I, I found it and I'll put a link down to it in the description. Um, it's an outdoor rug, so it can withstand the weather and stuff like that. That was another reason why I didn't want a rug, because I was like, oh, if it gets wet. But this is an outdoor rug, so it's made of that material that the water can kind of go through. And I think it's beautiful, and I think it absolutely added um, a touch down here that I needed to lighten the space up and also tie the two spaces together. So this part, this table is heavy, y'all. So if you have some help, get some help. It's like 7.30 in the morning when I'm recording this. My son is still asleep and my husband was traveling 
when I made this video. So me and my stubborn self was like, that is not going to, <laughs> to stop the show. I don't know if y'all on Instagram, but you know that audio that says my toxic trait is not help, asking for help. Yeah, that's me today, at least in this video. That's my toxic trait. So the table is heavy. So make sure you get some help because once you put all of this wood together, it's absolutely going to be heavy. So as you can see here, you can see it from the, up, you know, but if you that up, if you that high, like I have my camera up on a tripod on the bar. So that's why you can see down in between the middle of the slats. You can't see it when you're sitting at it. And if you all in my table like that, then you either need to make it for me or buy me another one. But I just wanted to point it out so that those of you that are kind of perfectionists, um, you know that if you don't paint, this is what you're going to deal with. Um, so, you know. That's just, you know, learn from my pain. <laughs> so you see a couple of pieces right here on this side too when you're screwing in. Be sure you put your drill on the right power. I had too much power on my drill, so it kind of cracked it. I tried to sand it down, it didn't work. Again, it's an outside table, so I'm dealing with the flaws. I think it just adds a little bit of rustic touch to what's going on. Um, but yeah, make sure your drill is on the proper setting when you are drilling in your screw so that you don't crack your wood because that is very possible. And if you like flat surfaces and you have a little bit of perfectionism in you, that is going to bug you. So the bench is heavy too. But again, my toxic trait is not asking for help this morning, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and these tables are actually complements to the table that I have under the covered patio. Difference is that table is gray and it is taking everything in me not to get the power washer out, to power wash it down, sand it down, and then paint it black. But I think I'm gonna leave it gray just so it's not too much black um, out here. I think it provides a nice contrast to what we have going on. So these chairs, I went back and forth on whether or not I was gonna invest in like fancy chairs, but this table in total with all of the materials, the table and the bench didn't cost me $300 to make. So because I went so budget friendly on the table, I was like, huh, let me see if I <laughs> can be that budget friendly on the chairs, especially considering the fact that I don't know if this is permanent. So the chairs I found at, at home, these sling chairs I wanted to try, uh, I wasn't sold on them. So I was like, let me find them. I actually got them for $25 a piece, which is cheaper than what they were at Home Depot, cheaper than what they were at Target. And then the curved back chairs, I wanted some style. I wanted to add a little bit more of an element out here. I got those. I actually paid $60 for those. Y'all know when it comes to trendy stuff, you're going to pay for it. And I got those from at home too. So I felt like that was still pretty good because have you seen the cost of dining chairs for your outdoor space? You know. They'd be like four, five hundred dollars a piece. So I feel like I'm winning and I feel like, you know, this is a perfect size. The table is a little over six feet wide and it's 40 inches in depth, which provides a perfect eating space for us. This chair, I love my egg chair. I'm not getting rid of it. I just got to find some great cushions um, to go along. So I think I'm gonna look on Amazon for that. And then right here where this chair is, we're gonna actually put a cantilever umbrella and it might go behind the chair. That chair might get to stay, it may not. If it does, I'm gonna spray paint it and change the cushion covers. And then right here in front of the pit, I'm gonna do another small rug so that if we're grilling, we can can have our shoes off as well so yeah that's the space y'all so that's it for today's video guys i hope you've enjoyed it um this project in total um for materials and everything I was able to build the table get the chairs the pillows and the rug all for less than like 700 bucks I think that's pretty cool so I um, learned a lot building this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together like a little build guide for this particular table so that 
if you decided you wanted to try it, you could quickly have a resource to help you put like your cuts and stuff together to save some time. It's really straightforward, really simple. And it'll give instructions like step-by-step -step on what to do as far as installing it. And you could have something like this on your patio for very inexpensive. I found the chairs again at, at home. They had them for $25, these sling chairs. And then I think the most expensive thing that I purchased was these arch back wing chairs to put at the end and they were like 60 bucks a piece. So I can still take my time, save up to decide if this is the style that I wanna keep down here. Although I think this is where I'm headed you know, it flows really well with what's going on up there. And color-wise, foundation color-wise, it's black there, black here. I think that's the way that I'm gonna go, but who knows, we'll see. But for now, we can enjoy eating and dining outside as a family. I can sit here and work during the day if I want. Summer is dying to get to the table so she could do like her coloring and arts and crafts me sitting here allows me to see the kids playing and it's comfortable and that's really what I was going for so I'm pleased I'm happy I can't wait until we get our umbrella in it should be on the way and I think we're gonna do like a patio cooler up there for underneath the TV so we can just have our cool drinks outside and we're good to go as far as furniture is concerned for outside. So now all I have to do is continue to tackle the landscaping projects. I've got some thoughts about what we're gonna do down below. I'll share those later, but if you wanna kinda keep up with how we're maintaining the landscape and planting and stuff like that, then be sure to check out the new channel like I mentioned before. Um, I'll have it linked here at the end and in the comments down below. But yeah, thanks for tuning in into today's video and I can't wait to see you next week. We got our pieces in, a few of our pieces in for the bedroom. So for real this time, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started in there. Even if we can't finish, we at least get started with like wall trim paint and stuff like that because I've got the essential pieces in that I need in order to get started. So we'll see you next week guys, bye.